guys, today I'm going to be doing a Beefy Miracle installation and review. And if you don't know what that is, Beefy Miracle is Fedora 17. That's what it was named. And if you happen to know why it was named this, I would love to know because it's the most unusual name I think I ever heard for an operating system. But, I mean, they could be referring to, like, the size of the operating system, that, like, it's super large. But that isn't really something you want to advertise because that just requires more overhead and system resources. So if you happen to know, please leave it below. I would love to know if you happen to know. Otherwise, just keep watching. I'm going to do the whole full installation of Fedora 17. I'm going to be doing it in VirtualBox. If you wait a little while, I'll probably put one uh, same kind of tutorial on a physical machine if you guys want to wait for that. Maybe next week or the week after, so you wait for that. And I do a short review at the end of some of the products and some of the utilities and desktop that I like keep watching. And I'll show you guys how to do all this right now. Let's go ahead and open up our virtual box installation. We click on new and we're going to start creating our brand new virtual machine. Let's go ahead and name it Fedora 17. And if you notice, once you start typing this in, your operating system and version will automatically get selected. You can give it a decent amount of memory, at least a gig. It probably can handle less if you wanted to. We can create our virtual disk. We can choose to go ahead and choose our VMDK file and choose dynamic. The reason we choose dynamic is so it loses less disk space. I'll go ahead and set it to 10 gigs, which I believe is Fedora's minimum. We can go ahead and create our virtual machine by clicking create. It'll take a second to generate the virtual disk and the virtual machine by clicking create right here. And now we're going to go ahead and turn on our virtual machine and we're going to select our media. By clicking next at the first run wizard, it's going to allow us to select our ISO image. The ISO can be downloaded from fedoraproject.org. I'll have the links in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and click on the folder. It'll allow me to browse. I'm going to search for the ISO image I just downloaded from the fedoraproject.org site. Fedora 17 Beefy Miracle. I have the 64-bit installation that I'm going to install. Be sure to download 64-bit or 32-bit depending on the machine you're running on. You can go ahead and start our virtual machine. And you notice initially it's going to give us two options, troubleshooting and start Fedora 17. I'm going to select Fedora 17. You can use the up and down arrows and enter to do your selection. It'll take a few seconds for the machine to boot up. I'll be presented with the option to either try Fedora for part of the live or install it. I'm going to go ahead and say try Fedora. You'll be given this uh, notification that you can do the installation from the live installation. So if you go ahead and hit close here, it will proceed to take you to your live desktop Fedora environment. Fedora Live is a full desktop. You can completely use it as is without doing any changes to your physical hard drive. This is a great way of having an operating system on the fly. It comes with a lot of standard software and browsers. But if you notice at the bottom there, it has the option to install Fedora. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and it's going to start our installation wizard. So here's our Fedora installer. Initially it's going to prompt you for your language selection. Next, it's going to ask us about our storage. Basic storage device is pretty much standard unless you're in some kind of production environment. But if you're doing this at home, basic storage just means your local hard drive. Do not click on specialized storage devices unless you have some iSCSI or fiber devices on your network that you plan on using. If you go ahead and click Next, it's going to present you with the hard drive that is present on the machine. So if you notice, we have our virtual hard drive from VirtualBox, our 10 gigs. We're going to say Yes, delete all data. Now we're going to select a host name. You can put a fully qualified domain name or just the straight host name. Either one should work. Then you're going to select the region for your time. And you can go ahead and click on the dot closest to your region to select the time zone. Now let's provide the root password for your system. The password should have some complexity to it to provide some additional security. So go ahead and include some letters, numbers, and special characters, and at least a length of seven, probably eight as a minimum. Once you do that, it's going to go and bring us to our storage option. So you notice you have a multiple options here. We're going to go ahead and say use all disk space because this is a virtual environment. But if you're doing a dual boot, be very, very careful here and select place existing Linux partition. And quite honestly, there is this shrink um, existing partitions option. I honestly have never seen this work with Windows, so I really warn against using that because I have never seen it work. If it has worked for you, leave it in the comments. I would love to know if it actually worked for somebody in this world other than myself, but I have tried this many times, so I'm just warning you now. 
So this is a virtual environment. It's not a dual boot. So we're going to just say use all um, space. Once you select the appropriate options, let's go ahead and click next. It's going to detect our storage and try to automatically partition out our hard drive. Now if you notice, there are some standard partitions that must exist in any Linux installation. And you can see them listed here. We have our slash boot, which is an actual partition. Then we have a logical partition with two additional slash and slash and swapped are our logical partitions. So once we're content with that, by default the size should be appropriate so you could, don't really need to change it. Now if you click next, it'll be prompt you if you want to make sure if you could write this to disk. These changes, once it takes effect, cannot be reverted. So again, if this is a dual boot environment you're doing this in, be careful before you write out your partition. Now you get to choose to install a bootloader. I always install bootloader. Unless you have another bootloader you plan on using, like a Windows bootloader, this is the one you want to use. And you can also add a password for additional security to your bootloader so that way when the machine's booting up, someone can't just walk up to it and change your boot options. So for additional security, go ahead and set your bootloader password. Once you're ready, go ahead and click next and then the installation will begin. Once it takes its complete, you're going to go ahead and reboot the machine and you have a first time user wizard you go through. It has some licensing information, but prim primarily it's going to prompt you to create a user. You can create one or more users here, so I'm going to go ahead and create an initial user account. This is pretty standardly done to help you prevent from logging in as root initially. It's a security measure that I noticed they've been taking over a number of years now. So we can go ahead and do that. You can add yourself to an administrative group. This should add you to your SDU doer list. We're going to select the appropriate time server. Let's make sure we have the right time. You don't have to have uh, a synchronized with the network time servers that Fedora provides, but it's nice to have the accurate time on your machine. It actually prevents some service issues if you plan on running this as a server. Servers do have a time requirement that has to be accurate. So just a little warning there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and log in with our user account. You could log in as root here if you wanted to, but I'm going to log in with my data account that I created. And now if we look at our activities list, we can go ahead and see all the applications that were installed by default and the categories. I actually really do like this desktop environment and how it is laid out. I think it's pretty clean. One of the nicer features I find of it is actually the multiple desktops that are offered here. One of the other features I find uh, useful in this desktop is the auto snap to the half screen, the bottom, and the top. It's actually a nice feature if you have a wide um, monitor. You can go ahead and snap mobile windows to the side to improve um, usability. So if I'm doing some kind of spreadsheet work or writing a paper and research, it's always nice to have this split screen option with the auto snapping that Windows 7 um, provides. Then there's also the desktop, the multiple desktops. So if you move your mouse to the right hand side, it automatically pops up and you can go ahead and drag your windows into whatever desktop and when you fill in the, all the desktops you have, it automatically creates a new empty desktop at the bottom there. You can go ahead and drag another window in there and that way you can organize all your applications in multiple windows and I find that's actually really usable the way they have offer these multiple desktop environments. Just as a quick note, it's always good to do your software updates, additional security guys, you don't want to have anything, any vulnerabilities on your machine, so go ahead and install your updates. It's really easy, you could go ahead and use the GUI or you could do the SUDO yum update. This is the same thing if you're used to Ubuntu, it's app get. Um, so go ahead and do that and it will do it on the command line and it'll take just a few minutes to run and then you reboot your machine and you have all the latest patches. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Especially if you know what, why it's called Beefy Miracle, please leave that below. I'd love to know. Otherwise, have you guys been watching the E3 com convention down in Los Angeles? I've been watching it streaming at work. Don't tell them. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.